Hey guys, so in this video I'll be focusing on an introduction to Newton's laws as well as focusing on Newton's first law. Just a couple of key concepts before we go into Newton's first law. Some of these include um, forces. Forces are obviously vector quantities, which means that they do require direction when writing them out. They act on objects and they are caused by agents. They are either observed through a change in motion, a change in direction, or a change in shape. A couple of common forces that are very important to understand for the syllabus. Gravity. The gravitational force is defined, is, is defined as the force that the Earth exerts on an object on or near its surface. This is the fundamental formula given as Fg equals mg, Fg standing for weight which is a measure of the force of attraction between the Earth and an object on or near the surface of the Earth. Then if we look at mass, the m is, represented, um, is representative of mass. Mass is always measured in kilograms, very important to note, because a lot of the questions to try and trick students, um, they'll give you the mass in either grams or uh, milligrams, so you must know your conversions to get those into um, kilograms. And then obviously, and mass is defined as the measure of the amount of matter within an object. G is obviously given as the gravitational constant, which is 9.8. Another important force is the normal force. The normal force is defined as the perpendicular force exerted by a surface on an object in contact with it. It always acts perpendicular to the surface, so as you can see by this example, if this line here is your surface, your normal force is always acting perpendicularly up from your surface. So imagine there's a 90 degree over here. Then your normal force is not always equal to your gravity, so that applies to this picture over here. If an object is on a, um, on a slope or an inclined plane, the normal force is definitely not equal to gravity as a whole. Rather, if you had to draw in gravity, you would draw it perpendicularly down and you would see that the normal force is only equal to the perpendicular component of the gravitational force. Then frictional force, another important force, is um, defined as the force that opposes the motion of an object. Um, if we look at this diagram over here, we can see that if you have an applied force acting to the right, your force of friction will act to the left, so in the complete opposite direction. Friction always opposes the motion of an object. Then we come onto tension. Tension exerts a force in both directions. Very common, um, you, you'll see tension when, when you ask to deal with questions involving two objects, and there's a string um, between the objects, you'll see when doing a free body diagram on these objects, uh, a separate free body diagram on the objects, you'll see that there's a common tension, which becomes very important to solving uh, simultaneous equations, which we will present later on. Then if we look at free body diagrams, I have made reference to them once or twice in this video already. Um, obviously, three key points before drawing free body diagrams is identify the object of interest, draw the diagram with all acting forces and label all forces fully. So he has a typical example of a typical free body diagram. So you have your applied force acting right, force of friction always opposing the motion, which will be acting left, normal force perpendicularly up from the surface and gravity always perpendicularly down. Then if we go into Newton's first law as a specific, Newton's first law is defined as an object continues in a state of rest or uniform velocity unless it is acted upon by a net or resultant force. Um, uh, a big portion of how they test Newton's first law is not always um, like through mathematical type questions, but rather through explaining questions uh, such as um, such as the seatbelt question over here. Um, I'll just, I won't, I won't read through the whole seatbelt question, but this basically just explains, um, you know, how Newton's first law can apply um, to seatbelts, for example. Then inertia. Inertia is defined as the property of an object that causes it to resist a change in its state of motion or uniform rest. 
So these are just a couple examples. Another important thing to note is that inertia is directly proportional to mass. These examples demonstrate inertia really well. Um, as we can see, the coin resists the horizontal change in motion and the coin with the largest mass will have the least horizontal motion because all its motion will be vertically. Then if we go to the second example, it's got to do with pulling strings and seeing which string, either the string above the object or the string below the object um, breaks. So the bottom string breaks when it is pulled quickly as the inertia of the object is not overcome. The top string breaks when pulled slowly as the inertia of the object is overcome. Then uh, the third example, the inertia of a ball is not overcome. The ball's motion does not change. The ball has greater inertia, which causes the ball to go backwards upon motion. If we look at this example, the inertia of the ball is overcome. The ball's motion changes and the ball has less inertia. And you can see the ball moves off in the same direction as the object's motion. That concludes the video on the introduction to Newton's laws, as well as specifically referring to Newton's first law. As I said, Newton's first law, make sure you can explain questions because there's very few mathematical questions relating to specifically to Newton's first law.